Hello guys, welcome! Today we have a grammar lesson. I'm going to tell you how to make different questions in English. Let's get started! First of all, let's look at the structure of a typical question. Generally, we make questions by putting the auxiliary verb before the subject in a sentence. Just to remind you, the auxiliary verbs in English are be, do, have and all modal verbs. Now let's look at different examples. She is late. So to make a question we take the auxiliary verb is and put it before the subject. She. Is she? Is she late? And you have your question. Another example. There were some books on the table. In this sentence there is the subject and where is the auxiliary verb. So, put were before there and you have your question. Were there any books on the table? One more example. You have finished the project. We have the auxiliary verb have and finished is the main verb. Again, put the auxiliary verb before the subject. Have you? Have you finished the project? The same works for modal verbs. He can run fast. Can is your auxiliary verb here. Put it before the subject. Can he run fast? Can he run fast? But what if we have multiple auxiliary verbs? Like in this example. She has been working hard. Has been working. We have two auxiliaries here. Has and been. And working is the main verb. You always take the first auxiliary verb and put it before the subject. Has she been working hard? One more example. They could have been sleeping. We have could, have and been three auxiliary verbs and sleeping is your main verb. Again, take the first one and put it before the subject. Could they have been sleeping? Easy, isn't it? But what if we don't have auxiliary verbs in our affirmative sentences, like in present simple and past simple? So in that case, we just have to add those auxiliary verbs when we make questions. For present simple, we use do or does. For past simple, we use did. Let's look at the examples. You live here. To make a question, we have to add do before the subject you. Do you live here? Peter likes his job. Again, we have to add does to make a question. Does Peter like his job? We use does for he, she, it and do for other subjects. Another example, in past simple. The car broke down. To make a question here, we have to add did before the subject. Did the car break down? Note that when you make questions with do, does and did, your main verb should always be infinitive. Do you live? Does Peter like? Did the car break down? Now let's look at different types of questions in English. There are four main types. They are yes-no questions, WH questions, alternative questions and tech questions. And we'll also look at another type which is called indirect questions. Number one, yes-no questions. These are questions that can be answered with either yes or no. They always start with an auxiliary verb, like these. Are you free on Friday? So you can answer yes I am or no I'm not. Did they come to the party? Yes they did, no they didn't. When you finish, will you join me? Yes I will, no I won't. Number two, WH questions. These are questions with a question word at the beginning. The question words are who, what, where, when, why and how. What is your favorite color? Who is he talking to? What are you looking at? Where has she been? 
When does the shop close? All these questions have a question word at the beginning. The word order is the same as in yes-no questions, so you have an auxiliary verb before your subject. But you can't answer yes or no, you have to give full answer. For example, what's your favorite color? You could say, it's blue, or my favorite color is blue. I'd like to note that if you have a preposition referring to your question word, like in these two questions, who are you talking to and what are you looking at, you always put the preposition at the end of the sentence. We don't say, to who are you talking to? Mm -mm. Or, at what are you looking at? No, the preposition comes at the end. Who are you talking to? What are you looking at? Within the WH questions group, I'd like to focus on a specific type, which is called subject questions, because these questions are formed a bit differently. You ask subject questions when you don't know the subject of your sentence, which is who or what performs the action. Subject questions are formed with question words who or what. For example, John is talking on the phone. You don't know who, so you ask, who is talking on the phone? Look at the word order. Our auxiliary verb is in its original place, which is before the main verb, so we don't put it before the subject. Well, actually, in this sentence, in this type of question, who is your question word and your subject at the same time? Look at another example. She likes apples. Who likes apples? It's question in present simple, but we don't use do or does here. So the word order is exactly like in typical affirmative sentence. Another example in past simple. He broke the window. Who broke the window? So you basically replace your subject with question word who or what. Something has happened. What has happened? So who and what are subjects in these questions and we have to treat them like we would treat he, she and it. Which means we have to use is, not are. So we say who is talking on the phone, not who are. Or who likes apples, not who like apples. Number three, alternative questions. These are questions that provide a choice among two or more answers. They can be formed with or without question words. Do you live in a house or a flat? Who won? Tom, Kate or Jane? How would you like your coffee? Black or with milk? Number four, tag questions. These are questions that are formed by adding a tag as a question onto the end of an affirmative sentence. For example, Sam enjoyed the film, didn't he? The first part of this question is a typical affirmative sentence, which could be positive, like in this example, or negative. And the question is in this tag. So that's why it has a reverse word order. Didn't he? To make a tag question, we take the auxiliary verb of the original sentence. In our case, it's did. And then we put the subject, he. So if your subject is not a pronoun, you have to replace it with a pronoun. Sam is he. And very important thing, if your sentence is positive, your tag should be negative. If your sentence is negative, your tag should be positive. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's a positive sentence, so the question tag is negative. Look at another example. You haven't heard the news, have you? The sentence is negative, so your question tag is positive. The meaning of a tag question depends on the intonation that you use. If your voice goes up at the end of the sentence, it means you are asking a real question. If your voice goes down, it means you're not really asking a question, you just want the person to confirm or to agree with you. Let's look at the last example. So, 
if we raise our voice at the end like this, you haven't heard the news, have you? We are asking a real question here. We don't know if the person has heard the news or not. So we are asking, have you? But what if we say the question tag with a fallen intonation when the voice goes down? You haven't heard the news, have you? You see, it sounds like we know the answer. We, we know that the person hasn't heard the news. We just, we're just inviting the person to agree or to confirm that. So, you haven't heard the news, have you? A real question. And you haven't heard the news, have you? An invitation to agree. We can also make a question tag with let's. The tag will be shall we? For example, let's have a walk, shall we? We can make question tags with imperatives as well. And the tag will be will you? For example, open the door, will you? And there is one little exception. When you make question tag with I am in positive form, the tag will be aren't I? I'm right, aren't I? But when you make it with a negative sentence like I'm not, the tag is formed by a general rule. For example, I'm not late, am I? And the last type of question we are going to look at in this video is indirect questions. Indirect questions are questions introduced by a phrase. Look at the examples. Where has he been? It's a usual question. I wonder where he has been. It's an indirect question. As you can see, it's introduced by a phrase. I wonder. Or another example. How much did you spend? Tell me how much you spend. Notice the word order in indirect questions. The word order is direct, which means we do not put the auxiliary verb before the subject. The word order is the same as in an affirmative sentence. Indirect questions can also be introduced by a question phrase, such as, can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? Look at the examples. Where is the bank? It's a usual question. Can you tell me where the bank is? It's an indirect question. Again, the word order is exactly as in an affirmative sentence. So we don't say, could you tell me where is the bank? No, we say, could you tell me where the bank is? How long do we have to wait? Do you know how long we have to wait? In writing, when you make indirect questions with phrases like, I wonder, I was wondering, I want to know, we always use a full stop at the end of the sentence. But with such phrases as, can you tell me? Could you tell me? Do you know? We always put a question mark at the end. Because these introductory phrases are questions, are real questions. Could you tell me? Do you know? If there is no question word in your indirect question, we have to add if or whether before it. For example, did you like the cake? It's a yes-no question, so there is no a question word. So we make an indirect question this way. We could say, I wonder if she liked the cake, or I wonder whether she liked the cake. Do you know if she liked the cake? Or do you know whether she liked the cake? Okay, that's it for today's lesson. I do hope it was useful and you've learned something new. I would like you to leave your examples of different types of questions in the comments section. So let it be a yes-no question, a WH question, a subject question, an alternative question, a tag question, and an indirect question. I would really love to read them. Thank you for watching and see you in another lesson. Bye!